I want to share with you in this video two ways that professionals make better headings in their Word documents to better present reports to clients and stakeholders to help get your point across. That's what I do here on Engineered Upgrade. I share the tools, the tips and tricks that will help professionals like you improve your work. So in this video, we're going to look at headings. Now I've got here on the screen a document that I was preparing for a different video, but I thought this was the perfect example of how we can use headings to our advantage when we're writing a professional report. The two things that I wanted to highlight here are the visual hierarchy between the first level of heading, the second level and the third level. See first level up here, second level here, and I've got the third level down here. The visual hierarchy between these headings helps to guide the reader through the document to help bring your point across to the reader. And I'm gonna show you how to set this up. The second way that professionals take advantage of headings in Word is to make sure that these numberings are set. Numberings, again, help to guide the reader through and help to reference the report later on. Particularly, I found when I'm trying to give clients or stakeholders an opportunity to comment on the report, to help get them involved in the report writing process, that having numbered sections really helps make the discussion move faster and so I highly recommend it. To organize your thoughts by headings and subheadings will make it a lot easier for people to read your report and when people read your report they really start to understand your point of view. So as professionals it's important to get that point of view across. So to set the headings like this what I've done is choose a different font weight from the general text. I've chosen a different font size and I've also set up this numbering. For the third level of heading, since it's getting a bit small and it's starting to look close to the normal paragraph text size, what I've done is it's, I've set it italic and then added this border on. So I'll take you through how to set up this big heading first. So I've set the styles already in a different video, so your word might look a bit different, but the key is to use these styles in the top right hand corner. So to come up here, set heading one first to your bigger text. Now your heading one might look a bit different, but don't worry, by the end, it will all look the same. So set heading one to the text at the start of your section. Then right click on heading one, and we're going to set this as a separate visual hierarchy. I don't like the default way that Word's included it, so please follow along to learn how I've done it this way. So I right clicked and then selected modify. Then I've come over to format, selected font, and in font I've selected Arial, so that all our text in our document is the same font. You can use a different font, but that's another design decision. We want to keep this quick, simple and professional, so I've gone with Arial. Then I've selected bold and I've selected size 22. My normal paragraph size, if you can see here under this box, is 12. So I've selected a bigger size, uh, 22 in this case, for the first heading. So click OK to that. Then under format and then select paragraph. Another trick I've done is to add some good space afterwards. A, a top section heading, a level one heading, should stand out from the document. And it helps when readers are flicking through the document, they can easily pick that, that section that they're looking for. Again, headings to get your point across. So in this case, select the amount of space afterwards. I like to do, this is probably about double the amount between a paragraph. And then that's, you can see here that the level one heading is set out from the level two. I like to keep it that way. To, so I like to use my level one headings to guide the reader when they're flicking through the document. Then I like to use my level two headings to set out maybe a topic or a subtopic within that to guide the reader through. I like to use my level three headings if to break up long sets of paragraphs, to maybe group some information together or give a short summary to help the reader if the reader chooses just to read the headings in my document, they should get a good idea of what's going on. They should get a good idea of the opinion that's being presented in this report. Because even as an engineer, all reports I produce tend to be opinions. So I like to set this after spacing to about double the paragraph spacing. I've chosen 12 in this case. So click OK to that and click OK again. So that's setting up our level one heading. Now our level two heading, this is where we start to guide the reader into some of the topics, the paragraphs inside the report. What are we trying to set out? What are we trying to say? So select your uh, heading two text. Again, come up to heading two in the styles, right click and modify, and we do the same process. But we go format and font. But this time we're going to pick, we're picking the same font and we're going to keep it bold, but we're going to pick a slightly smaller size this time. I've gone for 16. So we've got 22 for the level one heading, 16 for the level two heading. We've got 12 for the paragraph. And you can see why then that it's getting a bit hard to fit a third level of heading in, but that's okay. 
So 16 for the level two heading, click OK, click OK. Uh, oh, sorry, I should say, I should go back to that. Click modify, I've forgotten to show you the paragraph spacings. So format and paragraph. Now I'd like to keep it here the same as the paragraph spacing. And that way this heading is associated with the text below it. So that when you're flicking through, if you like the sound of the heading, you know immediately that the following text is linked to that heading. So keep that as, I, I like to keep that as the same as the space between paragraphs, that six point. Okay, now level three headings. How deep to go with your headings, how many levels to set up can be a bit of a challenge when you're doing the report. I like to include three levels of heading and then perhaps another unnumbered subheading is a level four. I've found that overwriting dozens and dozens of report, it's everything from six pages to a hundred pages, that there aren't many circumstances I need more than three numbered levels of headings and then a fourth heading that's unnumbered. Now the reason I only use three is because you start to get into a confusion of how many sections and subsections and sub clauses start to come out. It starts to read more like a legal document than a report. And as a professional, the goal is to get our point communicated to our audience. We're not here to write a contract. We're not here to write uh, a detailed uh, legally binding agreement or law or something like that. We're here to write a report that our reader is going to understand. And I find that if you're looking for more than say four levels of headings, perhaps this is the opportunity to rearrange your information. I've done another video about how to rearrange in tables. So uh, that'll be coming out soon. So hit subscribe if you're interested in that one. But otherwise, headings are a great way to arrange the information in your document and you don't, you shouldn't need more than four levels of headings. So in this video, I'm just going to show you three and then four is up to you whether you want to include it in your document or not. So for the third level heading, uh, a little trick I've done here, because you can see that this text size is only 14. So there's not much difference in text size between the paragraph, which is 12, the subheading here, which is 16, and then the third level heading here, which is, well, I've chosen 14 in this case. So to get around that, I've gone right click and modify. And I've set the italics as well. I've set it to be italic to make it stand out a bit. And to further make it stand out, I've put this border along the top, this uh, overline along the top. And I did that by clicking format, clicking border, and then setting the border in here. I've just gone with a half point line along the top. Now that's to set out the third level heading. So to make it uh, sort of be sub points within this, this uh, second level heading here. So to establish that there are sub points down there. Now this all comes back to how to arrange information within a document and that'll be another video that I'm releasing soon as well. So follow along if you're interested in that. So in this video, I've gone through so far how to arrange the visual hierarchy of the headings. The last point left is to set up the multi-level list style to get this numbering going. As I said before, the numbering is important. So click on the headings, click on one of the headings, click on this multi-level list button, the little arrow next to it and then click on define new multi-level list. Even if you have one set out for your headings at the moment, the only way to change it in Word is to click this button that says define a new. Now you're not necessarily defining a new list. What you're doing is just modifying the existing one. Word only has the one built in, but it, seems, it does seem a bit strange to click define new multi-level list, but that's okay, that's what we're going to click. So once you do that, you'll be given here this dialogue, this option to change the way that multi-level list headings are associated, multi-level lists are used. And I've simply gone with just one number and then a full stop. I like to keep it simple on these list headings. So you're using this multi-level list to, to create headings, to create the numbers in front of the headings. So I like to keep it nice and simple with each of them, just 3.1. You can use dots, spaces, hyphens, or anything like that. I've also set the text indent at this 1.27 centimeters. Now I know because, uh, I like to keep that consistent for all the headings. You can see all these headings are in line here. All these headings are in line because I've used this same 1.27 for all of them. And because I've only selected three levels, three sets of numbers, I know how much that's going to be. If I wanted four numbers, if I wanted four levels of numbering, so 3.1.1.1, then I'd have to move all the headings across a little bit more to keep the same effect of having, having headings in line. And I highly recommend that. 
It makes it look professional, clean, simple, and that's what we're doing because we're really focused on the content in a professional report. When professionals write reports, we're focused on the content to get the message out there. So I like to keep things simple with just the numbers in the line, the text in a line, and then to focus on the content of the report, the pictures, the figures, the text, the tables, and all sorts of data that we've included there. So uh, that, that's quite simply it, to set up that define new multi-level list for those headings. If you're interested in step-by-step -step details on how I've set up this multi-level list and how it's included in the table of contents as well, I'll leave a link to the description down below about a video I made where I went through step-by-step -step how to set up all the features in a professional report like this. Headings, footers, table of contents, headers, everything. Everything you can think of that a professional report needs. Step by step, I did a video on how to set that up. So my name's Chris, this is Engineered Upgrade. If you're interested in more ways that we can help you out here, hit the like button for this video and YouTube will start suggesting to you videos about how to improve your professional life, your professional work, and how you come across as a professional. My name's Chris and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.